Gateway Gamers Podcast. Hello, welcome to Gateway Gamers Podcast. My name is Brian Marvel, joined sometimes by the great R.P. Walsh, who's back from his writer's strike. Yeah. The picket. Yeah, I had to come back because um, I was picketing outside of Universal, and uh, the sun was just getting too much for me. Uh, I don't know, for those of you who don't know, uh, one of the major studios uh, trimmed their trees conveniently while the people were striking. <laughs> Uh, that and the the trees no longer provide shade now. You told me that earlier, and I was yeah. like, I can't help but laugh. That's but uh, RP's not an actor, not a writer, no, at least not a professional I, one. He does write for the podcast. I, had, I actually work for one of the companies. Yeah, shush, 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 shush. Shush. I'm not saying which one. No. Um. Yeah, you told me that earlier that on the picket line, it's freaking the funny, man. Cut the limbs to get less shade on the sidewalk for the picketers. It's just like, and they just want. Oh, it was planned already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's it, it's not like they trimmed them to make them nice. They trimmed the trees to go bare-boned. Like, mm-hmm. it's a it's a tactic. It's fun. It's it's just like, it's not fun, but it's just like funny. Or it's no, just it's, like... it's terrible, but it's it's funny. <laughs> it's like, you can't you help doing? but laugh, yeah. Besides, people in Hollywood are used to the, the sun. Mm-hmm. They were actually down in uh, Philadelphia, too, which I thought yeah, was Yeah, cool. I heard Kevin Bacon. And, no, uh... Kevin Bacon actually wasn't there. That was a lie. Oh, that was a lie? Yeah. Because I didn't see him. I didn't see him in any pictures. Oh, uh, when you were down there marching? Yeah, because it's right near where I work. Yeah, Love Park. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no way. And it was the, the cast from uh, Abbott Elementary. All of them? No. Um, the Redhead? The Redhead. The South Philly one has to be there, yeah. Yeah, which her, I don't think Quinta was there. Hmm. Uh, and then uh, the, the older teacher. Okay. Um, I like her a lot. Yeah, She's yeah. funny. Uh, she was there, too. Um. But no, I wasn't protesting. I wasn't picketing. It wasn't anything. I just thought I found that I couldn't believe that a studio did that. And then I found it to be too funny not to you, share. And then you can believe it. Yeah. Because yeah, like, if, you, if you hear everything coming out, you're like, oh, okay. They're, yeah, they they're would scummy. Do. Yes. <laughs> no surprise to anyone. No. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we support the writers. Yeah. We're, we're pro writers here. We love entertainment. Yeah, I write. So it's like, yeah. Um, Anybody can write yeah. uh, AI. Let the AI do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm, I'm, and this is a board game. This is a board game podcast <laughs> written by AI. Yeah. <laughs> Chat GPT for yeah. our scripts. Which is why their our episodes are so stupid and nonsensical. So it actually makes more sense. You love it that we go off on tangents because the or a podcast is what we do. We go off on. We're not an NPR. We stay. We go off on tangents mm-hmm. from time to time. Um, but if you saw the title today, we're talking the Star Wars deck building game, um, which is actually funny because we had a list of games we were going to talk about this summer, and this was not on it. Because no. I, I I wanted to get this game, but it just, it wasn't like a game where I was like dying to get. Yeah. It's in my Amazon wish list. It's always just there. And I'm like, I'll get it eventually, eventually. And now Target carries it. So I went to my local Target. It was on the shelf. I have a bunch of Target credit from just Ibotta and their yeah. cart app. So I was like, you know what? Like, I can get $20 off. Yeah. Just grab it. And and I said, hey, I... look what I got. I showed you my bag full of yeah. stuff. And you were like, bring that over. <laughs> this is why brick and mortar stores matter. Because it took you so long with the Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you saw it on the shelf and you grabbed it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I haven't been to my friendly local game shop in a while. So Target is usually... Well, if it's on my Target shelf, I go, ah, I'll describe it Well, there's here. reasons to go to Target, because some of these games are Target exclusives. Mm-hmm. So. And diapers. And diapers. Yeah, yeah I gotta get diapers for my kid. GameStop, or uh, local game stores don't carry diapers. No. Maybe they should. No. Maybe. They should. Yeah. They have you know, definitely got me going. <laughs> you know who carries stuff that, that was surprising? Staples. Staples carries, like, coffee. Coffee kind of makes sense, but they like toilet paper and, like, all this stuff. It's now. office supplies. Yeah, 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 it makes sense. But I was, I was, yeah, I was, like, kind of just surprised by it, because I saw, um... He's like, you earn ten dollars. Like, uh, they like a, basically like to remind the salesman, like, oh, ten dollars mm-hmm. off of thirty. You want to help me? We can get you to thirty dollars if you buy toilet paper or something. I guess I guess they have like an overstock. Mm-hmm. If you need, I guess if you need toilet paper, because no one thinks about. Yeah, staple. Staples. Oh, I need to, I need toilet paper. I got to run the staples or paper towels. But anyway, it's a podcast about board games. Yeah, <laughs> tangents, uh, tangents. Your, AI, keep us on. Yeah, keep us on task. <laughs> Um, uh, but like I said, I'll give you some basic stats on the game. Right, uh, what's the name of the game? I already said it. No, you did it. Yes, I did. You said it briefly. Say it again. S- did I not say it? Maybe no, I didn't. No, you, you said it. Okay. The Star Wars deck building game. The deck building game. The deck the, building game. Star Wars colon the deck building game. Is there a colon? On The colon's not present, yes, but it, it makes sense. 
Whew. <laughs> Anyway, Star Wars Duck Building Game came out this year, 2023. Uh, plays for two players, ages 12 and up. Uh, plays for 30 minutes. Designed by Caleb Grace, an artist of 35 different people that I'm not going to read. And published by Fantasy this is Flight why, Games. This is why writers are striking, because you... <laughs> so you are really... At the end, I'll, write, I'll read all 35 we'll just tag, artists. We'll just tag them. Yeah. Just tag them. Um, and MSRP's, I think, $36, which is... So we kind of talked about before our price of we'll get to it. entry and game, and it is just cards. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, because I also knocked Dutch Blitz for yeah, paying $50 you, yeah, for... Yeah, you did. But no, no, the art I, on this is more work do than not, the Dutch Blitz. Do not knock Johan Schmidt, whatever the heck his name was. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. remember. Gone or forgotten. Mr. Dutch. Don't... Yeah. The Amish. No, I agree. Uh, yeah, a lot of work on this game. The IP you're, you're always paying, paying for. The for yeah. yeah, you're paying you're for You're paying the, the mouse. Oh, oh boy. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, grab this game in Target. Uh, I love deck builders. We talked about before. I think deck builders are really fun for me. I like being able to kind of create a deck where I can be attack heavy. I can do this. Uh, we talked about the Harry Potter deck builder game, which you love. Yeah. Um, Plus, you love the IP, so another deck builder game with an IP that we both love is a no-brainer. Um, I just knew... The reason I kind of pushed this game off for so long was I knew Fantasy Flight would come out with expansions. Sure. Like, this is going to be an expansion-heavy game. I haven't played yet. I don't know what's in this box yet, but I imagine like they already have five expansions ready to go because they do uh, Marvel Champions... Which you've played with me, but we haven't reviewed, and they are yeah. expansion heavy with that. Yeah, I, well, I remember playing Marvel Champions. The one you have those cards sleeved. Is that the game? Yes, of course I have them sleeved. Yeah, I remember. You played as Doctor Strange. Yeah, which is an expansion. It's like I, so it's yeah. like if I want to get all these characters, I, I had rem- to buy every expansion. Right. I remember not liking it. I remember you being indifferent toward it. Yeah. It was a lot for you. Yeah. I, I Yeah, so I'd be curious if we were to replay that. Like, yeah, we will. We'll play it down the road because they have 8,000 expansions, so we'll yeah. have to cover one well, eventually. Well, you bought the Guardians expansion for... Well, no, the one that's that for Legendary. Oh, Jesus. That's the other deck builder game. Are you game serious? Oh, my God. From Upper Deck, I think. That yeah. game I stopped buying for. Forget it. Marvel Champions killed that game. Anyway, so Fantasy Plate made 8 million expansions for that. They keep pumping them out. Uh, they do a Lord of the Rings card game, which I haven't dived into yet, but I'm always looking at it. Eight million expansions for that. They have, uh, I think, Arkham Horror, and like they have oh, they okay. have multiple yeah. card games that they just print yeah. expansions for. So I know this game is just ripe for expansions. And when I opened it up to smell the cards, which is the thing I do, it's great. There's a lot of room for expansions, so I yeah. know it's coming. Fantasy Flight just gonna knock out probably yeah, 8, I mean, thousand it, more it'd be dumb if they didn't yeah it's there's so much to pull from so much lore so yeah. much Saul Guerrero to yeah. pull from that uh they could easily yeah your favorite Saul Guerrero yeah. um but that's kind of it I'm very curious their abundance. <laughs> save the dream <laughs> if you don't know Saul Guerrero <laughs> If you don't know Saul Guerrero, I don't know how you don't. If you like Star yeah, Wars, he's like in Star everything Wars. now. He's been a rebel. He's Clone the Wars. worst. He's the worst. He's, he's the worst. He's not the worst. He's the character in Rogue One, played by Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. He shows up in. Uh, he was in Andor as well. Makes sense. Oh, uh, was well, he? I didn't finish it, but he's in Andor. Oh, you didn't watch it? Oh, I didn't finish it. I loved Andor. I, uh, that's what everyone keeps telling me. Um, he was also in like the cartoons, the animated series. He's the guy who's like kind of robotic and like. By Rogue One, he's like a robot, essentially. He looks like oh, a robot. Really? I, I think he does. Like, he's in a big body suit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Duh, duh, and then he has, duh, duh. he'll be talking, and all of a sudden he has like a air thing on a zip line, yeah. and he'll just go. <laughs> 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 so, so, for some reason, he's a character. Like, people make fun of Jar Jar, I make fun of Saw Guerrero, and I just go, like, oh, Gina Erso. And then. Show <laughs> <laughs> the rebellion. Ugh. Anyway. That's the dream. I hate, I hate him. If he's in this game, I'm going to rip his card I, up. I can't. <laughs> I can never I, play him. I hate that character. Um, I'm ready to go play. Um, are you ready? Because I'm... Yes. Yeah. Let's go I'm play. itching to see what expansions let's this game's going to need. Let's jump to light speed. All right. 
We gotta beat that copyright. I know. All right, let's go play. And we're back. We played around. I was the great and powerful rebels. You were the empire, the crummy, the empire, garbage empire. Unlimited um, power. Is that what it says? Yeah. Or ultimate. The emperor. No, yeah. Unlimited power. Unlimited, unlimited power. <laughs> um, Star Wars. What did you think? I mean, just I initial it. thoughts. I thought it was great. I loved yeah, it. I, I really did. I really enjoyed this as well. We kind of talked about before we played that I love a deck builder. And this is yeah, a deck builder through and through. For not really kind of knowing all the rules we were able to figure it out super quick if you yeah. played a deck builder you've you got this game there's yeah. a few tweaks here and there we'll talk about but it was yeah super simple to jump into absolutely i realized that i like deck builders a lot mm -hmm. um especially if they're themed cool um like the harry potter games one oozes. of my favorite games yeah oozes, oozes theme. theme and this one does too i yeah, think this i think this is a i really think they good did job. a really good job keeping the theme of a deck builder yeah. with this game and i thought i'm not a huge star wars fan i like star wars mm -hmm. i think it's fun i don't i've never seen the clone wars and stuff like that mm -hmm. but this this caught my eye like on the shelf i when you when you sent me it i was like oh oh snap and playing it i was just really excited to kind of see what what card came next mm -hmm. um the mechanics are easy the uh everything about the presentation of the game i like except for the cube pieces which we'll talk about yeah um it's just nitpicky. Yeah, nitpicky. <laughs> I have nitpicky. a I have another nitpick. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, the great game. This is a great game. A good Kickstarter. A, um, a good gateway game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for somebody who never been into deck building, it's not overwhelming. It's mm -hmm. not. Uh, and if they like Star Wars, it's easy. But it's not overwhelming at all mm -hmm. to play. Like I said, we picked up pretty quickly. Very simple. Turns over. Then the next person goes, and it's not like things you have to remember yeah. constantly and stuff like that so. and there's not a lot of reading like literally at one no. point you were drawing cards and i was already yeah done my turn like i was just like All right, oh yeah do this 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 boom boom and you were like you go and i was like yeah like yeah. It's, just, it's that quick especially if you are a deck builder player then you you got the gist of the game as we said there's a few little tweaks here and there which i liked i liked the little things they kind of have in here that I complain about with other deck builders. Okay. Um, but we'll just go into gameplay. Um, as we said, if you played deck builder before, it's you start off with 10 cards that are your cards, uh, which neat is I have an emp I had a rebels deck. You had an empire deck that are specific to you and to me, but they're the same. It's just like your ships yeah. were your ships. My ships are my ships. I had uh, like a Jedi temple guard. You had, I like had stormtroopers and yeah, uh, inquisitor. inquisitor. You had an inquisitor, yeah. and that's kind of it. So what they do is uh, the ships that I had gave me resource points, and then the troopers that I kind of had gave me attack points. Mm -hmm. And then the temple guard that I had could it was versatile. It could give me an attack. It could give me um, a resource, or it could give me the force, which we'll also talk about later, which was really cool. And then with that, there's a row of cards in the middle. I think there were six cards in the middle. And what's neat about the, the six... The galaxy row. The galaxy as, as row. They call Sorry, it. I do have to be very specific. Yes. In the galaxy row, yeah. another very cool thing, which I've never seen in a deck builder before. I have it. It might be in other games. Um, the cards come out and they're laid out a specific way where if they're a rebel card, they, face. they face me as the rebel player. But there's text that's at the top that faces you mm -hmm. because there's something you could do. If it's a Empire card, it's flipped towards you. But there is text that I can only... That makes it easier for me. I can't... You can read it too, obviously. But yeah. it's just easier no, it's just, for me. It's, it's easier for yeah. our eyes to see if we want to... Know, you know what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then there are... Uh, what are the cards? The gray cards. They're like neutral. Yeah, and then there's neutral cards... That are just sideways either one of us can read because one of us could buy that. So when I have, let's say, seven resource, I could buy a car, any cards in the middle that cost seven. Yeah, resources are 
tokens tokens that you just kind of get yeah yeah um your your currency so if the money of falcons in the middle that was seven points i could buy that card or i could buy a three point a two point and then whatever else i've left over and it's cool on the cards um it indicates how much like you get like um so it'll have how much the card costs in the yellow circle and then underneath it'll have their currency their attack or their force movement Mm -hmm. um and i found that very cool very easy very straightforward very good very straightforward Yeah. yeah um and then, like I said, if there, if the card has, if it's facing me, I can buy it. If it's turned the other way, and it's one of your cards, I can't purchase it, but I can use my attack points to destroy that card. Yep. Or it's called sabotage. It's called sabotage for my group, mm-hmm. and I think it's called destroy for you. Again, mm-hmm. semantics of yeah. words, but um, words matter. Right yeah. or strike. <laughs> <laughs> um. And I thought that was cool. Like, it's... That's something I always kind of complain about, especially in the Harry Potter deck builder. The, yeah. The buy row, if you can't afford any of that stuff, it'll it's just sit there. there. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no... I know the expansions, I think, fix that, where you can destroy cards. But, you know, expansions, you just have this. So I constantly would have to house rule, like, all right, if I don't buy anything this turn, move the move. cards move down, and this card's gone, and then a new card comes out. But I like that... There's the neutral cards I could buy, there's the cards I could buy, or I could destroy cards. So even if I have attack and don't want to do anything with it, I can attack the cards in the middle yeah. to kind of slow you down. Because if there's a great, if you have Darth Vader out and you haven't bought him yet, but I have enough points to destroy him, yeah, I can to like get him out of the game. Like I, I thought that was really cool. Like I really liked that mechanic. Uh, me too. I thought that was very yeah. cool. The one problem, though, no. <laughs> with the Galaxy Row... It's very swingy. Yes. It's all chance. Whatever yeah. comes out of the deck. So you got very lucky. Mm-hmm. And I was very was less fortunate. Um, but the, just wanted to note, the thing that we're attacking are our bases. Yeah, so that's the point of the game. Yeah, I kind of glossed over that. Focus on the row. But. Yeah. yeah, so the point of the game is uh, you have five uh, planets that are your bases. And uh, you just have to destroy them um so there's like a counter at the bottom that shows you how many uh times it needs to be hit um and then once it's destroyed you know you for example uh, brian blew up my uh what on the death, death star. when he blew up the death star mm-hmm. was one was my last one um the, that was the last one to win the game it was just by chance happened to be the last one because mm-hmm. you just put them down in any order you start with one on top but that's how you beat the game you gotta just destroy all five of mm-hmm. them they have uh some perks for you like while that planet's showing um but yeah that's kind of it and then if you play a a capital ship which is just a ship you can pick up from the galaxy row you play it and the your opponent has to attack that before they can attack Mm -hmm. the planet and then once your capital ship's blown up it just goes back into your discard pile and you reshuffle it and come out and i thought that that was very cool yeah the the ship mechanics were cool because yeah I mean, the coolest part is they're all recognizable ships. So, like, the one was, like, the hammerhead, the hammerhead like, yeah. can come out. And then, like, even with that one, I was reading the text at the bottom. It's, like, I can have that sit there, or I can use that to ram your ship Oh, and destroy it. Oh, that's cool. So, it's, like, I can have that there as defense, but that ship was also, like... I didn't know that. Let's go ram yeah. <laughs> your ship to knock your ship out. Like, I thought that... But it's, like, obviously it blows itself up, so mm-hmm. it's self-sacrifice. But I thought super thematic and i love that and i love pulling out these ships they're just like the cruisers and the tie fighters and like all that kind of stuff i thought that was it made it exciting like this mechanically it's a great game the ip yeah is is what it it is yeah Yeah. it's it's hard to make something thematic with a card like just a standard deck builder mm -hmm. i think that they do a great job yeah the other thing uh we kind of glossed over was the force track yeah it, it didn't come into play too much, no. but it was still interesting, and I, maybe we just didn't get the cards, because that was the other thing. I think it's 90 cards. We saw... The 20? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you could play this game a lot and not see the same cards. Like you blow It's up, a fat deck. Yeah, you blow up the Money Falcon, you're like, you think that's the only one in there? And I was like, probably. Yeah. Like it pro- so you might see that one out of 90 cards. Like, And it was. There was no Yeah, you went through. Falcon, yeah. yeah. Was there Saul Guerrero? There was no Saul Guerrero. Seagull. There's the expansion. The <laughs> Saul Guerrero pack. I can't wait. There it is. First day purchase. Fantasy Flight. Get on it. Um, you got some two Saul <laughs> Guerrero fans. Um, but yeah, like it just... 
a giant deck. You'll never see all the cards. Yeah. Uh, so one of the th- aspects of the game maybe wasn't big for us this time, but another time it might be huge for us just depending on a draw. And it was the force tracker. Tracker. Um, so the game starts. The force is on the rebel side. Which so it's just like it's just like a little placard that's out two symbols on each side and then you put a cube on there and it starts on my side but there's six spaces in the middle it kind of jumps in between Mm -hmm. Uh, a card you play might move it if it's all the way at the bottom you gain a resource at the beginning of your turn so it's it's beneficial especially in the beginning of the game that's a huge jump and i like for the rebels yeah absolutely and giving the rebels the advantage that they need um not really Mm -hmm. based on how our game went Mm -hmm. but um it's just cool, thematic, and a small thing that is can be a big deal, but also for us, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But I just think it was very neat. They didn't need to do that. Nah. It was cool just to see the balance of the just force. Just something, yeah. I mean, it, the only card that had that effect, it was... Uh, like, that's, like, that really is cool. It's literally the yeah. balance of the force. Like, mm-hmm. Small, very small thing. Because who, very who cool. was the card? My, that... my Inquisitor could move it. I'm not saying move it. Who benefit? It was... Uh... The blind guy from... Oh, Chewitty. Yeah, so if the force was more on my side, he got extra attack. Yeah. And I think... He's Jin... the guy that goes in, in yeah. Rogue One. I am one with the force. The force is yeah, on me. The coolest character in that movie. Yes. One of them. One easily, of them. yeah. Definitely not Saul Cassian Andor. Is... Definitely not Cassian Andor. <laughs> Saul Guerrero was the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save the rebellion! Save the dream! Says that's quote? I don't even know. Yeah, that's when it, when like the, the building's coming down on him. Like, that's uh, what he says. Oh, he dies? Uh-huh. I just know, Jyn Erso. Jyn Erso. But that is the most annoying episode. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, maybe next time we play, it might come more into play. Which is neat, because each time we play, it might be a different game with yeah. Fortnite Tracker. Um, I think component-wise, cards are great. They're not like linen finish or anything. I'm definitely going to sleeve these bad boys because they're going to be used a lot. I'm going to play this game a lot. Yeah. I, I, there's not a true solo mode, but on BGG, people have made a solo mode. Mm-hmm. So I feel like oh, I'll try them yeah, out. And I'll definitely, well. This is something I'll I'll noodle with a lot. Um, and then as expansions come out, like unless unless I just don't play this game or like... You can't see yourself getting the I can't see myself not yeah getting the expansions especially right. like like you said like this like what would you say this covers this has some rogue one it's the pre it's the, the original trilogy because and then with rogue one but does it have all the characters like is leia like i never really looked through. i didn't see leia but i saw han chewy yeah han chewy Luke. Luke. so if leia's not in there that's weird but yeah i would say this is the the art on the the box is from Return of the Jedi, mm-hmm. so I think it covers Return of, the, but there's no. But Jabba's in here, yeah. So it's yeah. definitely almost like it's the original trilogy with Rogue but One, not even, yes, and sprinkled in some Rogue One, so which goes in line with that story, though. Yeah. So and then you have easily prequels, sequels, sequels, cartoon, cartoons. Like you can go the whole gamut, and you have it unlimited, and then you can go the TV Ahsoka, show, Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett. No. No. no, that one doesn't exist. But uh, the Mandalorian featuring the Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> no, you could do all that stuff. Like Grogu. I could see Grogu getting brought into this. Like Yoda's so not. Yoda's not in here. Yoda's not in here. So maybe it's just Return of the Jedi and Rogue One and Rogue One, and not even all the characters of Rogue One. Saul Guerrero's not here. So yeah, I would love a Force. If you don't have the Yoda, best. Though. That's true. That's not that bad. Yeah, so there you go. It's They're already ripe for... No, there's six we're... expansions easily. The back of the card is really cool, too. It just says Star Wars, and it's just like a blue spacey. It's very very whatever, but it's not yeah. as cool as like Villainous. It's just... It it's doesn't neat, pop. Though. It doesn't need to pop. It no, because just... the front of the card pops, because mm-hmm. the artwork is gorgeous. Artwork's fantastic. Just... Those 46 artists did their job. I thought it was 37. Whatever. Um, <laughs> 38, 40... Um, if you played any other Fantasy Flight Star Wars game, like Imperial Assault, it's the same art style. It's almost, uh, painting-like, like a realistic painting, and it looks great. It's exactly what it should be. It pops. The characters look like the characters. Han Solo looks sexier than he's ever looked, <laughs> and Chewbacca looks just as sexy, so, yeah, the yeah. art style's great. The it's ships a, look great. They're yeah, bombastic. It's fantastic. They're, they're moving. Everything looks kinetic. It's so just... that's what we love about it. Mm-hmm. My time for my nitpicks. Nitpick. All right, nitpick. 
So the the currency and the attack things being yellow and purple and not like red and blue or something was very strange to me. It is odd. It's a, it's just maybe just to make bright. I don't know what the point was. The dumbest nitpick you'll ever have yeah. is, is me saying this. It is. It was just odd. Just from a talking point, it's just odd. I don't know if it's just like they didn't want so much blue and red because like every deck is either blue or red. Yeah. And it's just like it's the box, the back of the cards are blue like i don't know if it's just like too they were like this is too much but it's just like the most neon (laughs) neon yellow and yellow and purplish like it's just it does like strike as soon as you open a box you're like what yeah (laughs) it's striking like it actually you know what it is what it's our logo logo, yeah (laughs) oh it is oh did you did you do this (laughs) how do we not realize (laughs) i don't know it's literally the same purple and yellow as our logo the purple's a little bit brighter, but yeah, no, it's like identical. I the nitpick take it away. <laughs> love it. Yeah, there's actually little little GGs on it too. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought that's what you were pointing to when you showed me at first. <laughs> wow, how about that? Never mind, nitpick removed. It literally is our logo color. <laughs> My real nitpick is uh, that this is only a two-player game. I think that that is a severe nitpick because there should be. I understand why it's only two, mm-hmm. but you should be able to have two people on the f- whatever. Like if if we wanted to play this with somebody else, is it we're stuck with two people and like I'm um, I'm almost sure. I'm trying to think. Unless you just worked as a team, I'm trying to think of like the Lord of the Rings game and the other games if they are just two player, but I don't think so. I think they're like it's a co op game almost. So I I would almost be surprised if they don't. Especially if if they make more, the decks could get bigger. Yeah, and I feel like the decks are already pretty stacked as it is. Yeah. So like having more would wouldn't it be great. So they have to come out. With, they they can't just make more cards. They have to do something. Yeah. More, and I'd almost be surprised if they don't come out with like a story mode. Oh, that would be. Or cool. like a campaign, like some kind of campaign. That where you really play co-op, cool. like be really I cool. would be, I'd be shocked if they don't do that, because Marvel, Legendary, and all their other ones, that's what they are. Sure, they're co-op campaign boxes. Gotcha. So I'd be surprised if this isn't like the first, and then each sequel is either more, but well, also it works easily. perfect as a two-player game. Like I, I know, no, no, yeah, it yeah. Does. Like I, I know what you're saying. Like the Harry Potter game is like four players versus the enemy, and I. I'm sure someone on BGG has something where it is. Yeah, I mean, player. all you do is you just take turns. Yeah. And, like, you're a team. But I could see... Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But also, I could see the... Only the, nitpick, though. The reverse. It's of me like, nitpicking a two-player game. Yeah. Why isn't it more? Mm-hmm. That's, like, it's dumb. It's dumb. Yeah. This is a great game. I love this game. I would add this game to my collection. Wow. And I'm not big. even a huge Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. Like, I love... I you, I like Star Wars. You're like a deck builder. Would Audra play this? <sighs> yes. Because she's versatile with Potter, I think. Yeah, I think because she likes the Potter. Because she, um, it's not a lot of reading, mm-hmm. and she she is thinks Star Wars is fine. Mm-hmm. She like, like I enjoy it. I enjoy the characters, like the movies. I love the movies. Yeah, where she's just like, eh, like very enjoy indifferent. It. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, I think so, and that's why that was running through my head when I asked you the price point, and mm-hmm. I was like, would she actually play yeah. this? Megan would not play this with me. Why? She because likes she doesn't like games where we're kind of burst each other. Because oh. she's a bit of a sore loser. Oh, Especially okay. if, if... But she always wins, doesn't she? Yes and no. It depends. <laughs> this game, though, if I destroyed her as quickly as I kind of beat you... You manhandled Never me. plays again. Yeah. She... I would have to... So I've kind of read or heard, like, the Rebels have the advantage and do better statistically over the Empire. So I would have to be the Empire versus her okay so for then, her to be kind of interested but i just maybe, I, think, I think she'll try this but i don't think it's gonna be her speed sure you know yeah. what she didn't like i was shocked splendor really I played marvel splendor with her which has no reading yeah and she was like that was fine really I was like i thought this would be i like that game your game yeah but she just nah no interest she loves fun. azul azul is like yeah her that's game. her thing She's and very she beats hype. me all the time <laughs> Uh, but you hearing it from us, this just gets the gateway gamer stamp of approval yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, easy, to, easy to play, simple to set up, quick. Easy. Quick was huge. I think yeah. what realistically we played twenty minutes. Yeah, probably. And yeah, if the box is a half hour. This was twenty minutes. If you're, I think if you're verse in, 
Yeah. Deck and builders. And that was me, like, getting I got up to let the dog out, yeah, like, yeah. all that stuff like that. Yeah, pretzels. Minutes. Yeah. yeah oof, those pretzels, man. Um, But, yeah, so I, I no real cons except for the amazing color choice that they made for the yeah. purple and yellow <laughs> yeah. components. Yeah, yeah, great. That's actually what we should leave, we should have let off with. Yeah. Um, that's my, that's it for Yeah, that's the end of the game the, portion. The games, yeah. Now to tie it into our e-ticket event. Yep. And talk about... We're here to talk about Star Tours. Star Tours, baby. <laughs> um, Opened up in 1989 in Florida. So I don't know much about the California one. I know it's kind of the same. Yeah. So I'm going to mention that one more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I've it opened to what, like 88 in Yeah, California. and it was crazy. Mm-hmm. It, it was in pandemonium. It was insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had the one in uh, California when it opened up yeah. was... They ran it 24 hours. Like they were, they ran three days. Yeah, it, the yeah. park was open three days straight yeah. just for Star Tours. Um, because that's how, that's how excited people yeah. were. And like, if you've seen the Imagineering story or even just know a little bit about Star Tours, the amount of work that they put in to build the vehicle mm-hmm. is insane. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Because we've talked about Disney so much because we love Disney. Where it's like I've been on that ride and I just. And I just never, just never think about it. Like no, it's, especially it's funny. now because simulators are so. Yeah. But it's just funny common. growing up, and it's just like now I look back and I'm like, wow, how do they do all this stuff? Where you're on the ride, and I'm a kid, I'm just like, I'm in space, I'm flying. Yep. But now you look back and you're like, oh, it was this, but it wasn't just this. Like no. there was so much involved in like just making this ride. Um, like the projectors being in yeah. the front, like everything, it's so heavy. Like mm-hmm. everything about this ride is at the time was so incredible and still it's very impressive now Mm -hmm. just to look back and see what they did yeah um one of the things i really found interesting was the first non-disney ride yeah that they kind of did where it's funny to look back where we kind of made fun of chapek who ran disney and just how close he was um in the 80s it was walt disney's son-in-law um, I forget his name. I forget his name too. But he was just like bad decisions left to right. The eighties yeah, were awful. like the worst time yeah. for Disney and just some of the choices they made. And so uh the original idea for Star Tours was uh the black hole. Yes. Like not to this extent, but they were like, We need to make a sci fi type ride. So they made the black hole and we're like, this is going to be our big, this is going to be Star Wars. Because at that time, after Star Wars, there were so many clones that came out in yeah. the movie theaters. Yeah. But Disney's like, this is going to be ours. Like, we, <laughs> this is it. This is a black hole. It was a bomb. Yeah. Financially, no one talks about it. Didn't uh, you watch it? It's did fine. You, did yeah. you, you? No, yeah. Did you I, watch it for when we covered it and previously recorded it? No. Oh, you watched it for previously recorded it? No. When we did the, the, the no, Disney Plus thing? No, I did a... Uh, we should do that again. That Idiots in King Arthur's Court. Oh, whatever. yeah, that's yeah. right. That's that right. was fun. We did, for as you don't know, on pre recorded we did... It was called Disney Plus Disasters. Yeah. And it was just old... We we all... Picked uh, one. Me, Brian, and Bob all picked uh, two movies each. I think we picked two. And uh, we just talked about them and... But they were obscure. So Disney Plus, when it first came out, they opened their whole library up. Yeah. So it was movies that you never... Like, kind of heard of. I, yeah, movies I'd never seen, yeah. never heard of. So mine was like an Idiots in King Arthur's Court, and it was about like this guy who goes back in time. Yeah. It was insane. And then Bob did Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Yeah. I did the Shaggy Dog Returns DA, or something. The Shaggy yeah. DA. Oh my God, it was awful. And then it was so much fun to talk about that. It's a long episode, but you yeah. go listen. It was a lot of fun. The other one was like the million dollar duck or something. The million dollar duck. Also, <laughs> terrible movie. Uh, just straight boring yeah that was so boring but uh that was like at the the middle of covid so yeah we were just we had time time we had time but uh no i did not watch i've seen the black hole personally okay but not for that um and it's whatever it's just a really that's what i call my bank account when my wife goes to target for reducer audra yeah love her (laughs) um she has a lesson it's fine no she doesn't so it was fine. It's just a it's a sci fi cheesy eighties movie. You could tell they tried to be like goofy, but also it's like super dark, and it just mm. didn't resonate with people. So and that's why Star Wars is there's only one Star Wars, mm-hmm. and you can't build a ride around an IP that people don't care about. Yeah. So uh, Tony Baxter, the, the great man. Imagineer, went to the head of Disney at the time, was just like, listen, like 
the shit sucks, basically. It was just, <laughs> in, like, the nicest way possible. It was just, like, everything we have stinks right now, but we need to do stuff for the park. We need something. We need to either talk to somebody who has, like, more clout. And I think in the Imagineering story it said, like, they wanted to go to Spielberg, but he was... With Universal. Universal. He was tied to Universal, so they are like, well, we'll go to his best friend, George. Yeah. Um, fun fact, George Lucas was at Disneyland. Yeah. The um, second day it opened. Yep. Yeah. Which is my... Like, can you imagine, like, it's... Like, it's not that amazing, but it is just, like, this kid went to Disneyland, and just, like, it's George Lucas, who yep. grows up to be... One of the his own biggest names genius, of all time, like, yeah. equivalent to Walt Disney in like his own way. In the in the eighties, yeah, yeah. So it's just like not uh, George Lucas is respected still. I think he's a genius in his own way. Yes, I think. Uh, yeah, I think he. He's a pioneer, and that's why I consider a, Walt Disney. I consider him a pioneer. Yes, I think he is a genius with crafting Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm talking about ILM. I'm talking about crafting. Oh, oh, I, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I'm behind. not saying like Star Wars. He, he was Wars. like, you're, that's a great point because yeah. Walt would be like, we'll figure it out. And yeah. that's kind of, George was like, figure And that's it what out. they did. He, he was the man that was just like, here's what I want to do. And people under him did it. Yep. And they created ILM. And that's what I say. He's a pioneer. Like, I don't. Have you watched that documentary? No. That, I haven't either. I started it and it just, it wasn't. It's not. It wasn't Fun. gripping me, yeah, as because like, like, I don't, in the nicest way possible. Like they're giving us the background on mm. some of these uh, visual effects, and like I don't care. Yeah. And it's also, uh, we're going on a tangent, but the way the reason that I love the Imagineering, move like documentary and. The, the subsequent episodes are just on rides. Yeah, they're behind fun. the attraction. Yeah, they're fun. They're, they're like fun. quick. They're goofy. Yes. So like even if they're like talking about something I don't care about. It's just like moving so fast. Well, even the Imagineering story, I think that was just perfectly, that's a perfectly made documentary. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's nice, it's succinct, and I love, mm-hmm. I, I love Disney. So, yeah. like Disney World especially. But I'm just saying, even if you don't love Disney, it's crafted so well. That's yeah. an interesting documentary. Yes. Yeah. Like, I'll watch those 30 for 30s about sports. I don't care about sports whatsoever. I never watch the 30, and I love sports. But there's, <laughs> there's some that are like done so well yeah. that even if i'm just like oh this is interesting like a, a good documentary like yeah someone behind it yeah absolutely can do a great job and they care about it yeah, yeah absolutely uh, tangent tangent over yeah sorry. tangent over anyway george lucas <laughs> so george lucas is at disneyland the second date opened uh he's come on record kind of trashing tomorrowland just saying that it wasn't yeah technologically whatever and it's like funny because it's like this is the guy who made star wars and all this future stuff so it's just interesting that he was kind of like even as a little kid just like mm, tomorrow man is a very tomorrow wish and it's just like he, yeah and he was all gung-ho yeah. when they approached him so yeah they approached him uh the first thing he did with disney was write captain eo yeah do you know who directed captain eo yeah kenny ortega no I francis thought... ford coppola <laughs> Oh, oh, that's right. Sorry, Kenny Ortega was involved in Captain yes. Eo, I believe, so, in the choreography. So Francis Ford Coppola, the oh, that's insane, Godfather, Oscar-winning director, directed, directed Captain it. Emo, Captain Eo, the load of crap. Um, I you, know that has a play. I think that's a piece of crap. I nostalgia. It's yeah, pure nostalgia sure. for me. Me and my we saw it. Love of Michael and I saw it in like the 2010s, and I was like, oh yeah, let's go watch it. And I was like, what? What the hell was this? But at the time. When it came out, probably yes. mind blowing. People loved it. Yes, that it's Michael and Disney and 3D Michael. and all this stuff happened and George Lucas written. Anyway, back to George. So Lucas. while this is going on, uh, Splash Mountain also got greenlit. A lot of new rides got greenlit because they had a new during this under Eisner. Yeah. So because Splash, you, you, I was about to say the story about Splash Mountain is great. So the new because we have a new CEO. Yeah, the Michael. son-in-law was out. Michael Eisner's in. Why is Michael Eisner making new rides and Captain EO and Star Wars? What was most of his decision making based off? Do you remember? If his son would like it, his son. Yeah, that's <laughs> the greatest story ever. So there's just like he's just like, well, my son likes Michael Jackson. That's hip, right? Like, let's do <laughs> Captain EO. <laughs> like, he he was like, because uh, when Tony Baxter pitched Splash Mountain, they needed the drop because mm-hmm. of he, he wanted he wanted his son to, to yeah. like it. It's a great story. Do you know why it's Splash Mountains in the name? No. Because the movie Splash was like... Oh, yeah. That's yes. What, so the movie Splash with, with Tom, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. They yeah. were like... It was well, going to be themed, right? No, but I think he was just like, well, that's a hit movie. 
And we want this ride to be a hit. So the call Disney it Splash decade, Mountain. The Disney decade under Michael Eisner, man. That was. But you know what? It's great. He did great stuff. No, <laughs> I appreciate what Michael Eisner did. We would yeah. probably still have two, just two theme parks, Epcot and Magic Kingdom, if it wasn't for him. Yeah. So Captain EO comes out. Uh, they, the Imagineers then go like, "Hey, Lucas, like that was fun, right? Let's make a Star Wars ride." And he's just like, "Yeah, let's do it." Like, all right, Love like that. in the most monotone, like, "Oh, okay, yeah." The most George Lucas thing ever. Yeah, oh, okay, Star yeah. Wars. <laughs> like, let's make a ride. Um, and then they bought four flight simulator cabins that were like five hundred thousand dollars each, Be- because there was a guy that went on vacation. Someone who worked at Imagineers went on vacation in, like, Europe and, like, rode one of these because they did, like, a white water rapid type simulation. Oh, that's cool. So, like, he just went to Imagineers and, like, they were, he was just like, oh, like, did you ever see these things? And they were like, no. So they all flew over and, like, rode in them and right. were like, we can make a ride out of this. And literally just like, well, to make it for Star that's Wars. Right. I forgot and they said that. they broke it. Because they kept saying, like, how far can it yeah, go? Yeah. How far can it go? How far? And yeah. they end up breaking a ride. Then they just fly <laughs> home. They're like, well, five, we'll buy four. So I think it's just, that's that's the stuff with Imagineering that's always, like, amazing. Is that yeah. they can find these things yeah. that, like, people use to test pilots for yeah. comrades. Yeah. It's not for, yeah, like, no, these they aren't had to, simulators that, like, jerk you around. No, they had to engineer them yeah. to be able to do what exactly they mm-hmm. wanted them to do to fit the flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there was only one film at the time, too, correct? Yeah, so the original when Star launched, Tours yeah. was one. Yeah, you didn't jump to, like... There was... was it eventually became, like, 53 different yeah, now combinations. Yeah, but I thought the one thing that was interesting was... Uh, they want... The, like, when they're going through all the engineering, and they're just like, all right. So with the way a hydraulic works, it's like they're jerking you around... And it's going down. And they need it to go back up. But it doesn't shoot back up. So in the movie, they had to figure out, like, all right, there's a part where we need to reset and, like, rise back up. And they're like, oh, tractor beam. So there's the one part in the ride, like, you're you're low. Like, you used all your jerky motions and the, the thing is down. And they need to lift it back up so they can jerk it around again. Oh. And that's when the, the Death Tract- Star tractors you. So as it's lifting you and it feels like you're lifting, that's because they need to reset that's the ride and i was like who thinks of that like that's why awesome. like anyone else will just be like all right well you're kind of still for a while we're just flying through space but they're like we need to make it bombastic it can't yeah. just be it has to be something and like it's why they're the best i i just love those type of little like details absolutely um it's people who care it's people yeah. that truly care not only about star wars but about the, what they're making like yeah. that's why i have so much respect and admiration for any imagineer because mm-hmm. they care it's not like and sure, they've they've put out some lackluster stuff. Uh, I will not lie; some of their newer stuff has been a little. Some of it, uh, like the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, was incredible. But then, you know, the Spider-Man ride in California, the mm-hmm. tech behind it is awesome. But it's not really that. It's not really great. Yeah. Um, but they still they care deeply about that, and, and that's why I'll never like truly like poo poo it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah, we're Disney adults, but. Most, no, we're not. Mostly, no, we're not. We're, we are we're Disney fans. We're Imagineer adults. We love because that's what it is. Like, I love going to Disney, and I love seeing how things are made. Yeah. Like, I'm not one of those people that goes and like, oh my god, this is real. It's like, no, that's no. A, that's a kid in a costume. This is a yeah, ride. Yeah, but I love like I don't get excited. I love about the, the mechanics and like seeing things. And I love. I have never been to Galaxy's Edge, but I yeah. love in the one documentary just like the detail yes. and like how the one thing i found amazing was how they went to lucasfilm studios got the original r2 like robot and like kind of tr- uh made a sculpt of his treads and throughout galaxy's yeah. edge those treads are going through the park you would never notice that you would never look down and kind of see these treads and think like oh that's r2 tread they could have done anything but they went through Yep. The time and the process to go, we need R2's actual treads to be going through this park. Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, whoa, like that's so crazy and like detailed. And I love like the story of Galaxy's Edge where there's like, we need set decorations. So we just went to like a plain scrapyard and started picking apart so stuff. Cool. 
because that's what George Lucas did. Like, if you watch the original Star Wars, there's, like, hair dryers. Yeah, because in the Imagineering story, they're building Galaxy's Edge at that mm-hmm. point. So, yeah, you get to see all the stuff. Because it can't be too crappy, mm-hmm. but it can't be too new. It can't be too futuristic, because yeah. George Lucas used, yeah. like, nonsense in yeah. the movies. And even in Rogue One, I think they did the same thing. Where, like, at one point, it's, like, solo cups, like, blown up. Like, the silos oh, are just, really? like, solo cups. Like oh, they that's awesome. They've done, like... To keep the homage to the original, yeah. like because you, you don't want to make it too future techy, but you want it familiar but also looking different. Yeah, and I think that's like Galaxy's Edge. Like you could tell they were like, oh, we're gonna do, yeah, all these little details. Where like I would love to just walk around Galaxy's Gal- Edge it, and just explore. It's awesome. As not a huge Star Wars fan, I was pumped for Black Spire Outpost to open. Um, it's incredible um i they did they did miss an opportunity to i appreciate their opportunity to build somewhere new but like Mm. they probably because some people are very divisive on the galaxy's edge because they would like to visit tatooine or Mm -hmm. coruscant or something i'm fine with something new Uh, me too however did you ever see the original like renderings they made yeah it's always way better so (laughs) amazing it's always well there was like going to be a bantha ride where you would walk around the park on a yeah. band and stuff like that. And obviously this never happens. Budgets and mm-hmm. even though the budgets for the parks Cheap were it. like a billion dollars. Um, but I, I love, I do truly love Galaxy's mm-hmm. Edge. I always look forward to going to it. Uh, Rise of the Resistance is one of the most impressive rides and best rides I've ever been on. And because of how complex the ride itself is, the ride has changed. Mm-hmm. Like there's a part where you used to go through and you would stop and beams would um, like cannon blasters would come up. And like time perfectly with your cart, so as oh, they you, don't do that anymore. No, it doesn't. It just never. It probably you, just failed you, too much. You stop, but the beams don't come up anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, I noticed that when I was in, when I rode last time in uh, Hollywood mm. or in L.A. Yeah, I know the Kylo Ren at Disneyland uh, mechanical that would sometimes. fail a lot, so they have like a, a fail safe. Oh, dude, it is such a bummer when that happens. Mm-hmm. Because you still get, like, the effect of, like, the wind and everything, but it's just, like, a screen, and it's him yeah, and his ship. Yeah, it's inside. him and his ship, yeah. The animatronic is so cool. The ride is awesome. Like, it's a trackless vehicle. The The coolest part of the whole thing is how they do the, uh, the blasters, like, mm-hmm. the blaster beams and everything with that. It's incredible. Yeah, I was blown. I haven't away by been on ride. it, but I ri- rode on YouTube when it yeah, first came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, Like, and there's a, there's a part where the lightsaber, Kylo Ren's lightsaber, comes through the mm-hmm. top. It's awesome. Uh, Galaxy's Edge and Rise of the Resistance are great. The weird part about it is Rise of the Resistance opened after Galaxy's Edge opened, yeah. so they had the other simulator, which is the Falcon, which is a downgrade from I heard uh, start from Star Tours. Like Star Tours is a much better experience, even though you get to fly the Falcon. If you're really not flying, you can be a flight, you can be the pilot, two pilots, one controls up and down, another controls left and right. You're a gunner and then a maintenance. And I actually, obviously, I've done the pilot once, but then the maintenance, I actually like better than the gunner because the gunner, you don't do anything. You truly don't do anything, but like with the maintenance. You can enjoy the ride more because you're Well, it's not even that. Like you're, if you, if you get hit, it'll like push you, tell you to push buttons to fix the, the cargo, like whatever mm-hmm. and it's like different locations of where it got hit so it's very thematic like it's it's a very cool experience obviously piloting is the best it's mm-hmm. hard to fly but the ride is like a the ride's a letdown you you go yeah. with hondo and aka um yep not lando no not han not chewy not no. even ray chewy would have like made sense because <clears throat> chewy's alive yeah he's in the land and he's yeah he yeah. walks around and everything the seeing the falcon is very impressive it's mm-hmm. it's incredible um, and then even like before you get into the, the ride, you know, there's like, you, it looks pre-show like your show area. Yeah. yeah. The pre-show, the pre-show, not a pre-show, whatever, but, but like, like the a preloading, yeah. you, you can sit in the Falcon and then you sit in the, the cockpit and it's just a very, whatever, it's a video game mm-hmm. and there's the it, mechanics of the ride is cool. Yeah. Do you a, know that though? Yeah. Like how it rotates. It rotates. Yeah. So yeah, that was the one thing they couldn't figure out with that ride was just like, they didn't want to have just six people. Like, yeah, they wanted to. It's a cockpit of six people, and they were like, "We're only gonna be able to put like a hundred people on a ride a day. It's gonna be insane." And, Disney and then being, also, D- Disney being Disney, they don't want to see people they come don't, off. Yep, yeah, they, they don't want. They want you to feel like you're the only person getting on and off. So they didn't want like 
the line to be where you're getting off and like or see other people getting off so do you know what the ride they stole from was no the wheel of progress oh oh really just carousel kind of, progress the carousel progress where they were like well that's what we need to do where it's just like you sit in your cockpit and it rotates and you're watching the simulation but as you're rotating the other cockpit is coming up next to it and mm-hmm. people are loading on and then that's rotating so you're yeah, riding the ride and you're spinning but you don't realize it because you're moving yeah. because there's a simulator so it's just like you're getting on and rotating and then as you're rotating someone else is getting on so it's like i don't know how many but let's say like 13 different cockpits they're throwing six people in six yeah and then as there's you're different, there's six different colors as you're done you get off and then it rotates mm-hmm. and more people get on so it's like you get off your own exit because you're the only people getting off on that area like yeah. i again super cool like and these cockpits you're getting into look exactly like the movie uh and then they're these giant computers because they need mm. to generate virtual reality high graphic it's virtual a video reality. game essentially right like, yeah yeah because be a, you need to push stuff and it reacts and, it reacts, and yeah. then you need to feel that you need to have 4k graphics and everything it's it's incredible mm-hmm the ride itself is very whatever, yeah. but it's it's something I always do. I always make sure I do it because I, I enjoy it, and just talking about it is making me excited. I'm, I'm going back in a couple months. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited to go back. And then the best part about, besides Rise of the Resistance, obviously, is Oga's Cantina. You go in, the original Star Tours pilot, D, uh, Rex. DJ Rex, DJ Rex, is now, he's now DJ Rex, um, and there's themed drinks. The mm. food is not good in Ogus yeah. Cantina because it's like it's who's his theme oh my god yeah you're That's you're it. you're covered in theme yeah. but like the food itself is like a charcuterie board <laughs> you're covered in theme you're covered in theme <laughs> oozes it covers you in theme uh and then, but the drinks are amazing mm-hmm. but they're all there was one that's like a fuzzy tauntaun and it has this like numbing uh, foam on top that like kind of gives you like a little tingle and oh, makes your fun. lips a little numb blue milk it's all I need uh, blue milk is in there is like uh more of like a milk when you get it outside it's more of like a smoothie mm. consistency uh but it comes with a a, a bantha cookie on top in the uh, it's yeah. awesome That's man need. it's so oliver would love it and then yeah you, megan said today she was like maybe in a couple of years i was like no oh, so the prices go down and they, let me know let and me they know. start do both bringing Hol- stuff universal back. and disney oh, also she'll go yeah you go to harry potter land me and oliver going to star wars yeah because oliver loves star wars mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of this is making me excited, making me want to do that. But that's the best part of Galaxy's Edge. It's very themed. There's so much cool stuff to do. If you want to talk about Disney tries to do the, the Star Wars stuff well. Obviously, um, the Galactic Star Cruiser was a big letdown for a lot of people. It sounded awesome, though. It did. It sounded it was, awesome. That's but just I, a lot. But the mecha- yeah, the, the whole... The Galactic Star Cruiser was their... Star Wars themed like cruise on land basically it's like to a make hotel, it's a hotel kinda, yeah. but it's an experience like you're in role playing for, for like three, three days, days. yeah it's it was a it lot. sounded amazing if that's your thing like if you like if you're like an I think actor it's too niche and like it's too niche to be successful I think it if it was like a one day if it was one or even like three hours if they just kind of rotated out like it wasn't a hotel but if it was like you go there for like a a dinner. Like, you know how you go to a stupid dinner and a show yeah, kind of things? Which where it's they like, have. Yeah, where it's just kind of like a whodunit. I think that that would have worked. Where you just go to dinner and, like, you go on, like, a ship. Like, you just create a big immersive spaceship. You go to dinner. Something happens. And you're just there for three hours. Yeah. Like, or that's it. Nothing like three days. Like, I'll, I'll pretend for a couple hours. Yeah. Like, oh, it's me, Brian Space man like yeah. i just not for three days where i was like hey brian spaceman i'm like oh god i'm exhausted i just mm-hmm. want to go on a ride and it's, the weird part about it now is like they can't do anything with the nothing building. nope like if they want to depreciate it fully off the like they can't like they need to mm-hmm. right it's getting written off the books is yeah, huge it's gonna be expense there. for them blow it up yep blow it up, tear it down. It. but galaxy's edge if you've been it's awesome even as not a huge star wars fan that is my that's probably my favorite star mm-hmm. wars thing aside from the movies star tours will always be mine i talked about it on here before i had the chance to go to the last last ride but my yep, girlfriend at the time messed it up yep did you ever watch the final show no so like boba fett like blows it up oh really <laughs> yeah. it's like fat vader <laughs> like it's just like oh, now the final 
tour, and then Boba Fett throws in like a thermal detonator, and they shoot fireworks. Oh, off. that's like cool. it's, it's cool, but it's just like that, they need to that br- cheesy. They need to bring back the Star Wars hoopla. Yeah, right? it's that cheesy Disney. Before Disney bought it and made it yeah. so serious, it's Disney. It, Star Wars was was more fun. Yeah. Well, did you ever see the Disney ballet that they did for opening day? Mm, you no, know, I've heard people talk. Yeah, about it, it's rough. Like Michael yeah. Eisner, like ribbon cutting, he uses a lightsaber to like cut the rope. Oh, really? But like before, it's like a guy is Han Solo and Leia, like ballet dancing like it's just very odd like it's it's so michael eisner like what are we what is this like what are we doing because then chapek opened up like galaxy's edge and it was just him he he's him he's business he's all business well it's him and bob Iger. Iger was still around when that opened but he's just back but who did i say chapek Chapek. that's what i meant but bob Iger's just kind of he's just there and he's just like all right guys like this is our new land like here we are all right he just cuts the rope normal no lightsaber Mm -hmm. no bells or whistles nothing and then michael eisner's like hey it's me michael like i'm just i'm a star (laughs) Star Wars is one of these things. That this is what like makes me like Star Wars more. But like I, I just I do. But like all of my friends are bigger, or at least claim to be bigger yeah. Star Wars fans than I am. And I just I like it, but I don't. I'm not obsessed with it. Like some yeah, people I are. my my appreciation of Star Wars. But you watch I, everything. It's it's definitely waned since like Disney kind of bought it. Like these sequels have definitely like I don't even want to say soured because like I don't hate them and. I'm one of those people that's like, even if I don't like those, what I like is always there. Yeah. It's always there. I can watch it again. And that's what it is. And it's always just like nostalgia for me. Like, I grew up watching it. Um, I was in a peak of like the 97 remakes. So all the toys, I had the toys. I still have all those toys and my original like 70s toys. And now my son's like getting into them. So it's like rekindling that love. And it's like, I'll watch like boba fett and i'll watch mandalorian but i'm not like dying like it's yeah. just like well it's there if i don't have disney plus i want to be clamoring yeah. to watch it it's just like ah, eh, it's yeah. wednesday night mandalorian's on like all right like i and i'm not like i don't read the comics and i don't read the books and i don't i'm not like that type of person like i've i've watched the cartoons again because they're there i also think that like star wars is like People wear it with a badge of honor, like mm-hmm. "Oh, I'm a Star Wars fan." Like you don't know that. Mm. Like they're yeah. they're they can be stupid. Like uh, it's like any. It's we talked about it a million like, times. I know. Any, well, I'm talking more so like even about just our friends who are yeah, big Star Wars but fans. Any like, fandom is just gonna have those type of people. Like even board games. Like there's yeah. people that just their whole life is board games, and that's everything they do. And it's like I follow them on Instagram, I and know. I see them. And I'm just like, how how are you posting? eight times a day yeah like do you have work do you yeah. go, to, so you go to work and like your entire basement's board games and that's yeah. all you have like is that it that's what you have and that's what is a star wars just like some people just cling to the past that's what their thing is like star wars is my thing i like star wars oh star trek's my thing like i and it's like i've got better at that we talked about before like it's just star wars wasn't made for me like george lucas made it that's his baby if he's happy with it, that's all that matters. Like, so, I can like, I can hate, whatever. Yeah. Like, it's just... Yeah, like, I mean, my thing is clearly Marvel and, like, Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. And for the first time, I actually... There was a movie, a product that they made that I was like, this isn't good, but mm-hmm. I still watched it. Yeah, I well, was Secret like, Invasion. There's, yeah, Secret yeah. Invasion. I was, I was like, oh, there's things to like here, but then I just was like, yeah. And you know what yeah. I did? I just moved on with my yeah. life. I just you finished kept going. it. Oh, just, cool. Yeah. The Marvels is coming out in October, in November. I can't wait. Yep. I'm excited. But people, you know, don't live like that and have problems. Some people have problems with women. But um, <laughs> with all the race stuff, I, there was somebody I used to work with who's a giant Star Wars fan. He's like, nah, oh, God, none of this uh, Ray. Mary, Mary Sue's they're called, where it's just like... People who hate women. No, it's it's like a... It's a term where it's just like women... A woman character is like more powerful for no reason than yeah, they deserve to be. Yeah. It's like Luke was the same. Yeah. Luke <laughs> was the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? It's literally <laughs> Luke. Yeah. Like, you yeah. can't... Yeah, he was like, ah, Kathleen Kennedy's got to get out of there. And I'm like... She's been there since uh, the, she, That's the, what the people beginning. are dumb. Yes. Like, she's been there... Same thing with like people are saying it about indie. Them. She's been a producer on all yes. of the indie films. She was there since the beginning. I have no problem with Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. My problem with her is that she had her and Bob Iger had no. Well, it's not really necessarily Bob Iger, but for the they had no arc planned out for the mm-hmm. trilogy. Like 
So that's why the the, the sequel trilogy wasn't good because yeah. it wasn't cohesive. And that's my only problem with yep, her. Other yeah. than that, I don't care. Yeah. She's great. She's, yeah. she's pushing product out. She's literally George Lucas. Like yeah. she's been there since, since the beginning him. of everything. Yeah. yeah. He, he left. She stayed. Yep. Yeah, she she did get eight she didn't get their billion eight, dollars. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Four billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but that's uh that's our episode on Star Wars. Yeah. And if you like this talk Please head over on the previously recorded. Yes. We covered the Star Wars films, all of them. Uh, we did the all the three sequels. We did Rogue One. We did The Mandalorian uh, about in January of 2021. Um, and check it out. We, we we went in depth. That Brian was on mm-hmm. an episode uh, on the uh, the prequel trilogy episode. Yep. It's yeah. a great episode. Go yeah. check it out. Defending the prequels of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, as always, remember to rate, like, and subscribe. Check out the T T Public you do Red Bubble every time. time now. Oh. I've, call, I've mm-hmm. Nick has had to edit that oh, multiple previously, times. Yeah. Previously recorded too. T Public Red Bubble. Check it out. Um, it's in the show notes. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. May but the force be, be with, with you. you.